see if we can add a little timer component to it. All right. Just like track our time. So Alan, what do we need to do to make that happen? Because this is so in this scene. <clears throat> um in the hierarchy, let's make a new object called like game manager or something. Top left. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. Uh empty, empty game mode? Yeah. And then mm -hmm. add a script machine component. Not in there, in the on the right. And then you make a new one, make a new graph, the button, yeah. And name it like timer, game manager, whatever you want. Okay. Okay. So first, we're we're gonna do something with this quest. So we want to get a link to the quest object. So in the variables on the top, you want to make a new variable. Name it like. No, oh, yeah. Name it like quest, I guess. Okay. Yeah, type the name in first for some reason. Got it. Yeah, it's a weird thing. And then set the type to game object. Yep. Nice. And this lets us like basically just make a reference to something else in the scene. So we want to drag in the quest object on the left into that value field. Okay, so now nice. that's probably all we need. Oh, actually, no. We should set something else up. So we're doing like a timer, but we want to like display this somehow. So we want to make a UI canvas. So right click there and just click uh, UI canvas. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. UI canvas. And then you yeah, delete that one. Um, so in that canvas, uh, you can click on the game. So when, you, when you're editing canvases, like they won't show up on the scene view, but they'll show up well on the game view. So on the top oh, here. game, yeah. And there's nothing in the canvas yet, so you don't see anything. But okay. if you right click the canvas there, yeah, and then do new, uh, UI and then text, text mesh pro near the top. Yeah. So, I mean, we can just leave it there probably. Maybe like uh, on the right, under the transform, move the Y up a little bit so it's maybe not in the center of the screen. No, on the very at the very top. No, no. That's oh oh oh. Sure. I would do like three hundred. That's good. That's good. That's good. Oh, three hundred. Oh, yeah. oh, that's good. Okay. Um, and then for now, you can just delete the text inside the text box so it doesn't say new text. Yeah. And then back to our script. We can we, now we got to get a reference to that object, so we want to make a new variable and we can call it text. Um, and then make the type be text mesh pro UGUI, the bottom one. Uh, text mesh, the regular text mesh pro is for like non UI, UGUI is UI. Um, I guarantee okay. anyone who's Worked on UI is not as I come to problems with that. Um, anyways, let's go to the uh, edit graph. Um, and then, yeah, hit OK. We got to set up a bunch of stuff in the background. OK. Loading. OK. Yeah, so you yeah, dock this in like the game view so that we. You can like drag the yeah. Like put it in or like just, no, just next just to like, it. Just like yeah, like that. Perfect. Oh. Okay. Oh, oh no, I had it wrong. Have... Yeah. This. And then okay. like get us some get us some room because project project view is too big. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I had perfect. to. Uh... Um, All right. Cool. Okay. So we what we want to do is when you start the quest, we want to start a timer, and when you end the quest, we want to like stop. The timer and then I don't know, do something maybe. Um, so I actually need to look this up. What's the best node to do this? Uh, There's tons of nodes, right? <laughs> There's a timer node. Yeah, but it's not really what you want to use because, like, 
Why would it be the obvious one, of course? Uh, so the timer node is like, it's not a stopwatch node. It's like a, um, I guess, a timer. It's It like counts down. We want to count up. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there is. Take it real quick. Uh, yeah, okay. So it, there's nothing to do this like for us, so we got to do it ourselves. So uh, we want to make a event. I mean, I'm trying to think of the best way to do it. Anyways, okay, let's make a event for when the quest starts. So right click to make a new node. And then do, okay, so to find all the spatial nodes, you go to like, there's two ways we have like there's like events and actions to find all the actions you go to spatial at the bottom okay. and then you can go to like these are all the they're all organized so you can go to like quest and these are all the quests or like these are, there's a ton of things you can do you can like change get the names and set set the current task anyways we're not we're nice. not gonna use this we're gonna go back a few we're gonna go to the front of this menu one more and then go to events near the top it's a little lightning bolt and in here, there's another folder called spatial. Another folder called quests. So these are all the quest events. And we want to do on quest started. Yeah, that. And then we also want an on quest completed. You could just like type that in. It's fine. You don't have to go through the menus every time. Yep. All right, cool. Uh, so for now, you can like put the completed one to the side. We're not gonna use it yet. Um, All right. So okay. So basically, what we're gonna do is we need to this node by itself on quest started. It it won't get called because it needs like a reference to a quest. You can see on below it, it says like this. That means yep. by default, it's looking for a quest on this object. On the right hand side, like all of our components, like we don't have a quest over there, so it's not gonna find anything. But we made that reference yeah. to the quest object, so we can drag that in by like this little, into there. Yeah, but like to the left a bit. There's like there's like a drag area to the left. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Yep. Drag that in. And then like yeah, it'll drop a node. Uh and then so the output of that node is on the right, and you can drag that output into the input of the in event node. <laughs> okay. So basically, what we're yep. and then <laughs> move them. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. So yeah. what we're saying is like, on, we're we're, we're kind of like proxying that object to like check for an a quest started event. Um, I get it. Yeah, it's like a pass through in a way. What was that? It's like passing through that. Oh, this is a quest. Like in a way, it's letting it know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. <clears throat> all right. So. What we're going to do is we need to track a uh, time and some sort of state that's like we're currently like we are tracking time. So we need a Boolean and a float. A Boolean is like true or false, which will be we are counting or we are not counting. Mm -hmm. and a float will be the number. So on the left, there is this blackboard section and you can see like graph object scene. These are like. Mm -hmm. You can put variables in here, and these are all different contexts. So object, if you click on object, those are like the public variables you defined earlier. Um, mm -hmm. But we don't want it to be, uh, actually. Yeah, for now, we can just go to graph. And graph is just kind of like hidden values that, uh, yeah, just don't show up in the inspector. You can just use them to calculate things. So first, mm -hmm. let's make a, a variable called like counting. Maybe, or is counting. Perfect. And make that a Boolean. And this is just like a true or false value. You can see, you can select true or false by hitting that checkbox. And that's, that'll like set the default value. Uh, okay. We want it to be false, so it's good. Um, okay. And then we want to make another variable that's like, uh, Time not counting or no, no, because so is counting like it's either is or isn't, yeah. We are counting or we are not counting based on, yeah. Value. So, gotcha. we want to we want a variable that like counts the time, so you could name it just like timer, I guess it's fine. 
and then make it a float. And a float is just like a number that has decimals, basically. So it could equal 1, or it could equal 1.1, 1 .1 or 0, or 0 0.128, whatever. Um, okay. then, yeah. So first step is to like, uh, is to, OK, let's actually like set up the actual timer itself. So on update, this, the on update node basically fires every single frame, no matter what the frame rate is. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, what we want to do is every frame, you want to add the amount of time that has passed since the previous frame. So first, uh, we only want to do this if we are, like, is counting is true. So we can branch off that update and make an if node. Yep. And then we can plug the, like, drag the is counting into the graph and then plug it into the the little the purple bit. No, no, no. So nope. connect this to here. Yes. And drag this up here somewhere no. or no? no? Okay. So, so nodes always go from like left to right, left being yeah. the input side and the right being the output side. So we want to output is counting into this new if node. So we would go okay. from the, the get variable should be on the left. Yeah, move it the other way around. Gotcha. Yeah. And then put this into there? Yep. Cool. And like you'll, you'll maybe notice, like, you, you can't put an input into an input. So, like, you can't drag that yeah. purple thing into the orange port. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So now, um, basically, if counting is true, the top arrow will fire. If it's not, the bottom arrow will fire. All we care about is if it's true, so let's just drag out from the there. And what we want to do is set timer. Uh, yep. So what we're going to do is every frame, we're going to set the variable, the value of the timer. And what that value is going to be is going to be timer, the existing value of timer, which currently is 0, plus the amount of time that's passed. So um, OK. Get us a little bit of room because we're gonna need to have like four nodes or something. No, like down, okay. like down to the left. <laughs> so let's add. Um, let's let's drag in the timer variable. Yep. And to Josh, Josh is saying you, you could use like uh, the timer node. There's like an actual timer node, but and it gives you like an elapsed amount of time, but. Uh, it has like limits. So unless you want to like set a timer for a million seconds, you might run out of time. Anyways, uh, so okay, so we want to add this to time that's passed. So drag out from the right and create an add node. And okay, if anyone's paying attention, this is not that important usually, but it can be. It's a whole bunch of different ads. Um, like. The two you usually will be using is like scalar or whatever type you're using, and then generic. Um, something to consider this is like really in the weeds is like if you're using like integers, make sure you use generic and like multiply by integers because scalar is like a float. I don't know. Maybe someone will come into an issue because like if you if you multiply a float by an integer, a lot of times it'll turn into a, a float even though you wanted it to be an integer. Whatever. Anyways, just do a scalar, I guess, or generic. Doesn't matter. And uh, yeah. actually, let's add the uh, scalar one as well. So do like add scalar. Uh, I can actually show the difference. So on the top, okay. On, also at the very top of your screen, there's like a thing that says dim. Can you disable that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So the add node has like these white ports, and that just means it's like an object port. So like, this is visual scripting basically C sharp, and in C sharp, an object can have like an inherent like addition operator. So if you had two colors, for example, you could plug those into the add, and then you could like add colors together, or you could I don't know do anything. But on the bottom, you can see it's like ex explicitly like numbers. Like you can define a number for the second one. Mm -hmm. uh, so just uh, for differences. Okay. But you can just delete that second one. Doesn't matter. Because 
what we're doing, it'll, it'll behave exactly the same way no matter which one we use because they're both floats either way. So uh, we want to add the amount of time that's passed. So to get that, you do uh, the look for the delta time node. And it's, yeah, the second one. Okay. And you want to, so we want to add this to timer. So mm -hmm. you want to like put it like into the add node. The add, the add was like put in together. It's like this? Yeah. Yep. That. And All right, cool. so <laughs> the result of that add node is just timer plus time that's passed. So now we can drag that into the set timer. Right up here into the orange? No. Oh. So you can right click a connection to delete it. Okay. And I'm dragging it into set timer, you said. Set variable. So, so like up here? On the bottom is that white part. It's unlabeled, yeah. but that's basically like oh, it's the this value one, that this one. To. That's like the new value it gets set to. Gotcha. Okay. And Cool. This is kind of what I was like rambling about. Like, so that set variable has a white port. You can set that variable as like anything. So you could, if you're not careful, you could like accidentally set it as like a game object, and then your timer is now a game object instead of a number. So, mm. just um, yeah, that. Uh, great um, things. Yeah. So, okay. So now, let's. I guess we should update the text now. So. Uh, I just noticed we never we never like link the text in the on the right. You can see it's like on the very right. It's like no yep. nothing. So I just like drag the text from the left of the screen onto the right. Uh, this yep. text. Yep. yep. Cool. All right, perfect. So now let's get that text into the let's drag a drag them in, and then so we want to go off of him, and we want to do a set text. No. Set uh, text. No, not that one. Not that one. So, <laughs> that oh, no. wrong one. Yeah, delete that. Um, there's like, okay, <laughs> it's like a million of these. So scroll down. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay, so it's what I was saying before. There's like text mesh pro set text, but those aren't the right ones. You want to go further down to the, yeah, the UGUI, and there's like a million of these. Um, the, the one you want to use at the very bottom, right there, yeah. Okay. Okay. So this takes in a string, which is like numbers. Or sorry, <laughs> not numbers. Just like words or letters or characters. They could be numbers, but it's like, you know, it's like it's like what you you type strings into Google Docs. Um, mm -hmm. So we need to convert our float into a string. So we can branch off of the Timer, no, the set set timer. Arrow or circle? Doesn't matter. Okay. So the difference is like when you drag off of a node, it'll like be contextual in the menu that pops up. So if you drag off of that arrow node, it'll only pull up like actions that can be executed. If you dragged off okay. of the little dot, it would pull up. Like it would pull up actions, but also maybe like uh, something like that add node that's like only takes in inputs, no triggers. So, anyways, uh, look okay. up the type in like float to string, and then do the one that says uh, the third one format. I think, yeah. Um, so this is like. You would, there's no way you would know this without like knowing C sharp. But when you do like float to string, you can like type in format codes to like make it look different. So you could type in like, I think yeah, I think you want to type in F1 in format, and that'll give you like one decimal place because our, our the the number of our float will be like zero point one six four five three four five as the game goes on. And we, we don't want to display that because it looks really janky and will make mm -hmm. people think you don't know what you're doing. So you want to like format it so it's just like one decimal point and then it looks nice. So F1 um, here? 
Yeah, and I'm gonna double check that. And then we want to drag the timer into the, the top of that. Okay. Okay, so in the format, you actually want to type in, I think, like 0, 0.0. And I'll do like the number to one decimal place, I think. I don't know. I don't I never remember these. I, have to, I always have to look them up. All right. So okay, so you wanna so the set variable, you wanna take that output on the bottom and put it into the input of the next node. Is it possible gotcha. to create your own UI leaderboard and display everyone's name in the top ten of come yeah, or whatever? Uh yeah, so currently to this guy in the chat. Um, you could totally do that, but there's a lot of limitations. Like you could only have a leaderboard for like people that are currently in the lobby or something. Like you would need to, each player would need to like have some state assigned to them. And then, I don't know, this is, it's pretty complicated. Like if you don't uh, know a lot about programming, this would be hard to explain, but uh, we are working on actual leaderboards in the future, so. This will be much more attainable soon. Anyways, um, so we now want to uh, go from to string. We, we want to we put this string into the text. So we want to go from to string to the, the set text, and we want to set the bottom variable as the new string. This thing? Or that thing? Yep. Oh, yes, you only have one option. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then orange to orange. Nice. Yes. So if we scroll, scroll out or zoom out a little bit, this little, tiny little chunk we have is like, if we read it like a book, it's like, if, zoom in a little bit, I can't see it. <laughs> okay. If, if is counting is true, then we want to set the timer to the timer plus the time that's passed. And then we want to convert that to a string. And then we're setting our UI element to re to output that string, uh, which is cool. So yeah. far, is counting never gets set, so this will never do anything. So we need to uh, enable it. So when the quest is started, we need to do we need to set is counting to true. So you could just branch off of that quest started node and do set is counting. And then you want to branch off the value input, which is on the bottom left. And then do a Boolean literal right at the top. Right at the top. <laughs> yeah. So this is a literal is just a way to like define a value just like in the graph. So kind of like how we define variables on the left, you can just like define a value. And then so we want to enable it. So we want to set it to true. Yeah, perfect. Um, and then we want to turn this off. So we want to do the same thing after quest completed, but disable it. OK. So OK. Uh... So you can just like copy paste these nodes. Let's do that. OK, nice. Yeah, and then you need to de to uh, define like the quest, like we did with the first one. I have to have that unchecked, right? Yeah, but yeah, exactly. Okay, and then quest. I just drag this in, or no, I drag the I drag. Uh, yeah, yep. the thing from over here, right? So you can from from this from quest? this view, from this view, you could have clicked on like object on the left on like the left panel. There's like an object variables. You could have gone there. Okay. But, it's whatever. So same same thing. I gotcha. Yep. Oh, did that do it right or no? Yeah. Did I so, drag the wrong so thing? What, what you're gonna do? Wait, what you like almost did was like you're gonna like drag a variable directly into that box. You mm -hmm. really don't want to like put anything in that box because that box means like is like a direct reference to like an object. But this is like a script 
that lives outside of the context of like any object. So you could put this in, you could use this script for like three different scenes and your quest might be a different quest. So you always want to use uh, variables. So I don't successfully have anything in here yet, right? No. No. But this, I don't want to do that. So you can't, but. Okay. Yeah, you can just, just, just drop the, uh, drop the, uh, the node in there. The oh, you, just like, the node? Yeah. Okay. This. And then, and then connect them. Ah, uh, ah, ah. To the beginning of on quest complete. Ah, okay. Yeah, there we go. That makes sense. So I think if you hit test, this would probably work. Okay. Let's see. I'm guessing we should figure out a way to package this into a node that we can give to people. <laughs> Obviously, here we're referencing like quests and stuff, but like outside of that, like I wonder if that's possible. Just like timer node, or like. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe the the like the reusable part of this node is like add time to variable, but like. Then we you have to add the two string stuff. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you'll be able to replay this whole thing. So if you've lost, uh, I mean, if you missed we, any steps <laughs> after this, we we could because you, you can like make subgraphs basically. So you can like make your own nodes inside Visual Scripting. So you could like make a node that turn like does the whole uh, to Josh about user IDs. Uh, that's an interesting point I didn't realize. So I think with, yeah, I think we do have to add those. I was going to say, we you could maybe like assign users their, like a custom ID with like the save system that's coming up. But I think that won't work. We can so get, yeah, you can pull, you, we can pull, uh, there's the nodes for user ID and like profile picture. Is there? Is yeah. There so well, we pull we pull display name, and you can get like actor ID, which is temporary. But if you have two people with the same username, then yeah. Okay. Um, I just had to shrink Unity from being full screen, so that messed something up for some reason. Oh, all right. Does now I have control. We know <laughs> where spatial stores the player press on a local machine. No, and if we did, we it doesn't really matter because we're not going to use player prefs coming next week so yeah doesn't really matter sorry <laughs> all right so we got, all right cool we got the checkpoints we got the timer now we just the last thing is so semi last thing so when you go to this final gate the timer should stop nice oh, so you scored nice. a four, 14 148 48 and a half forever yeah jeez jack you suck at this so yeah, I, I just gave you guys an easy score to beat, so you know. Oh, okay, there you go. Cool. We're just gonna start the timer at a different time, other than like right away. Yeah, yeah so if you wanted to do that, then to... what you would want to do is like you can go into the space and like open the quest in the hierarchy. Um, you have it set to like st start automatically near the top. Yeah, so you could like uncheck that. And then you could like create an interactable somewhere that's like start quest and then start yeah. quest done. Nice. Like, could I make that interactable be the golf cart? Like, when you enter the golf cart, it starts pretty much if I wanted to? Yeah, you could. Okay, nice. That's cool. Uh, dang. Uh, but so, like, I clicked on visual scripting graph here and nothing, I don't see anything. It's just so I need to. Yeah, so. I get that back up you can just like click on the oh object. game manager there we go yeah but like this window would just show like whatever script is selected and you just didn't have one selected makes sense okay nice all right wow got deeper in that than i ever thought i would but thank you for walking me through that very much <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome yeah yeah, so it we'll, makes sense. Yeah, we'll we'll like I think we should we'll clean this up maybe a little bit or like um you know 
post like we can post this script to our examples obviously with some caveats being like you need a quest set up and you need a canvas and text component set up. um but i think we can post this in our samples for people to to leverage because i know some people are like oh take a screenshot like oh let's like make sure to take a screenshot of that so we can save it but we can we can share that share that out um with those two yeah. caveats totally um we were piddling around with a badge earlier should we try and see if we can finish that or would that yeah did that finish did that finish publishing does the world show up in your I see. If you refresh this page, or if you got the email notification. Oh, I see two worlds. You oh, do? Wait. Golfstickle course is there. Oh, it added to that same world. Oh, cool. Yeah. I guess you had that selected in. Um... Yeah, I think I did when publishing. Okay. Is that okay? So you... Yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah, we had it in the same. I didn't realize. It. I thought it was publishing as a separate as a separate space uh, or okay. as a separate world. So yeah, so you can have the multiple spaces in one world. So that's dope. Nice. Um, so, so now we could have probably done this um, earlier. Um, so yeah, Schmerz is saying like, you know, to do a different badge based on your time. I think maybe we can continue that part next week, but let's right now uh, we'll add this like rewarding a badge um, piece. Um, so if you go to badges in the top, and then click new badge. So this is where we can create our badge. And these badges could be rewarded in any of the spaces that exist within this world. So right now it's called Untitled World, but um, we can give it a name. So yeah, Winter, Winter, Chicken Dinner. And then you can, so the, the name will be what shows up um, on your profile. So the badges show up on people's profiles. So the name will show up there. And then if someone clicks on it, they can see the description and then what space that badge was won in. Um, so if you want to give any context to uh, to the to the badge, you can give a little description. Um, it could be fun. It could be whatever you know, whatever you want it to be. Um, and then most importantly, we'll need the thumbnail. So like the actual badge itself. Um, so this can be like any PNG as long as it fits within those um, specifications, like 1024 by 20, 1024 one-to-one -one ratio and under a megabyte. Um, so if it's an image that fits within that, it'll work. We give you a bunch of samples. Um, so obviously you can create your own, you know, any image you want to use um, can be used for that. But also Jack, if you go back, click cancel, um, there's that little button there, click here for a template and examples. If you click that, um, it will bring you here as a Dropbox nice. a bunch of samples. We give you like a, little template at the beginning so you can like you know make sure it's shaped correctly using you know whatever tools you want to use to create it or here's a bunch of like sample badges that you can use um so you could download that so now if you want to upload you can choose one of those um, cool there you go and then create badge and that cool badge created successfully and then it gives you that id at the bottom so that's what we needed before to reference in the quest rewards was that ID. So you can click copy on that. And then if you go back into Unity and then to your quest and then to the quest rewards, if you click the plus button underneath that and then choose a badge, yep. And then the ID for it, just paste that in there. That's all you need to do. So now when someone completes the quest, there'll be a pop-up on the screen that says, hey, you won this badge, winner, winner, chicken dinner badge. And then it'll show up on your profile and you can flex it to all your friends. Nice. And uh, so I that only happens in the published version of the space, correct? Correct. Yep. Um, yeah, correct. Nice. So, yeah. So then the next phase, and this is something that we can continue next week since we're about um, at a time, uh, is doing um, I, like, there's so much we can do this space. I think we can turn this into like, you know, uh, uh, what's that game with the giant, like you have like a giant soccer ball, like the kick it into nets. Rocket League. Rocket League. Yeah, like kind of like, right. Yeah, we can maybe and start to build like a Rocket League like type of game. I think mm. Pretty dope. Um, 
you know, we've got a timer, so we can figure out ways to like almost like keep score. Um, or the next thing, like Shmurz mentioned, was um, giving different badges based on your time. So that would be, I think, something done through more visual scripting, being like, if the timer, you know, you stop the time, if the timer, you know, is less than this, then give this badge. If it's less than that, give, you know, if it's less than, if, yeah, if it's less than this, give that badge effectively. Um, there would have to be logic built in there um, to do that, but um, that could be something cool we could do next with, with visual scripting. So let's take note of that. Yeah, Swifty Gaz is saying Rocket League and Spatial. Let's make it happen. And we can work on it here. If other people want to work on the community, let's make Rocket League and Spatial happen. It can happen. We can do Rocket League with golf carts. I know people are building all their own vehicles too. It'll be like super dope to have Rocket League in or Jet Ski League. Yeah. Ooh. Josh and Smurfs, you guys want to be able to Jet Ski League? That would be <laughs> crazy. That'd be wicked cool. Yeah. yeah. That would be dope. That would be dope. 